What if I told you that deep inside Africa, behind factory doors rarely seen by outsiders, a revolutionary technology is being built? Machines that create cars which never need charging, never stop running, and might just dismantle the global oil and EV industries overnight. Today, we step inside Africa's first self-powered EV factory, and what we found left the world in complete shock. The first glimpse. The camera pans across a massive, futuristic facility. Robots are welding, automated arms assembling vehicles, and on conveyor belts roll the world's first self-powered cars, vehicles that generate their own electricity endlessly. This isn't just an assembly plant. It looks more like a fusion of Tesla's Gigafactory and a sci-fi movie set. The hum of machines is different. No battery banks, no charging ports, just pure, silent innovation. Journalists from U.S., Europe, and Asia walk in stunned silence. Some whisper, if this is real, everything changes. The technology that shouldn't exist. In the center of the factory floor stands a massive display, a dismantled model of the car's self-charging power unit. It's not powered by fuel, not by sunlight, not by traditional batteries. Instead, engineers explain how the system taps into free energy principles that mainstream science has long dismissed as impossible. One American engineer shakes his head in disbelief, whispering, I've spent 20 years building EV batteries, and this car doesn't even need one. The visitors lean closer as the guide continues. This factory isn't just about producing cars. It's about producing freedom. The global shockwaves. Within hours, news spreads like wildfire. Headlines flash across screens. Africa unveils the world's first self-powered EV factory. Tesla and Toyota engineers left speechless after factory tour. The end of oil? What Africa just revealed could reshape everything. Investors scramble. Oil prices wobble. Traditional automakers go into emergency meetings. Some call a hoax. Others call the beginning of a new world order. But those who were inside the factory know what they saw. It was real. The test track cliffhanger. Finally, the engineers lead the visitors outside where a secret test track waits. Several brand new self-powered cars line up under the African sun. Engines hum softly, doors close, and in an instant, the cars take off with breathtaking acceleration. Cameras shake as reporters try to capture the moment. The cars don't slow down. They don't stop. They run faster, smoother, endlessly. And then, just as the convoy disappears into the horizon, an engineer turns to the journalist and says quietly, This is only the beginning. The impossible test run. The convoy of self-powered EVs race down the test track. Their acceleration sharper than anything the journalist had ever seen. But what stunned them wasn't just the speed, it was a silence. No roaring engines. No whine of charging batteries. Just a smooth, almost otherworldly hum that felt limitless. One journalist whispered into his mic. Ladies and gentlemen, these cars aren't slowing down. They're not even consuming fuel. It's as if they're drawing power from thin air. The engineers monitoring the run exchanged knowing glances. The vehicles have been running continuously for over 24 hours in previous internal tests, without stopping for refueling or charging. But this was the first time the world was watching. The global live stream, unbeknownst to many, Hidden cameras inside the factory were broadcasting the test live. Within minutes, millions tuned in from around the world. Comments exploded across the screen. This has to be fake. If real, oil is finished. Where can I buy one of these cars? Meanwhile, energy CEOs in boardrooms across Europe and America slammed their fists on the table. How had this factory, hidden in Africa, beaten them to a future they had promised for decades? but never delivered. The expert breakdown. As the cars continued their endless run, an African engineer stepped forward to address the stunned crowd of reporters. You've been told for over a century that free energy is a myth, but what you're witnessing now proves otherwise. Our vehicles tap into a constant natural source of energy that has always surrounded us, but was ignored because it threatened the most powerful industries in the world. Gasps filled the air. Some reporters scribble furiously in notebooks, while others simply stare at the cars zooming by with tears in their eyes. The government response. 
Multiple governments demand an immediate investigation into Africa's self-powered EV factory. It was clear the world superpowers weren't going to just sit back and let this revolution unfold. Already, drones were spotted hovering above the test track, gathering data. But inside the factory, the engineers remained calm. They knew this moment would come. One of them said quietly, this isn't just a car, it's a statement. And no one can stop what's already been set in motion. The pressure builds. Within hours of the live stream, the African EV factory became the most talked about subject on the planet. News anchors debated furiously. Experts were flown into studios, and social media feeds exploded with clips of the endless test run. But behind the excitement was a darker storm brewing. Global oil giants, car manufacturers, and even top government officials held emergency meetings. One leaked transcript revealed a chilling line from a Western Energy CEO. If this technology spreads, our trillion-dollar industry collapses overnight. We must contain it. And just like that, a coordinated campaign began. Smear campaign. The next morning, headlines in major newspapers read, African factory exposed. Free energy cars a hoax? Impossible science. Experts warn of fake claims. Conspiracy theories drive EV frenzy online. Paid experts appeared on television, calling the technology unscientific, impossible, and dangerous. Some even claimed the cars were secretly using hidden fuel tanks. But the live stream didn't lie. The cars were still running nonstop without ever stopping for recharge. The secret meeting. Inside the factory's control room, the engineers gathered around a glowing digital map. Red dots blinked across the screen, marking the surveillance drones and military aircraft circling nearby. One of the lead inventors spoke firmly. They're not here to understand us. They're here to shut us down. But we have something they don't. Time. Every minute these cars run, the truth spreads further. He tapped the map, revealing their next move. A convoy of self-powered EVs was being prepared. Not for testing, but for a cross-country journey across Africa. The plan was simple yet daring. Prove to the entire continent that the cars worked, and make it impossible for the world to deny. The convoy begins. At dawn, a fleet of sleek, silver self-powered vehicles rolled out of factory gates. Journalists piled into chase cars, drones followed overhead, and entire villages lined the roads to watch history in motion. The cars accelerated effortlessly, eating up the miles without stopping. In some towns, people ran alongside them, cheering, waving flags, and chanting, Africa rises! Africa rises! The live stream audience ballooned into the tens of millions. What began as a factory demonstration was transforming into a continent-wide revolution. The rising tide. The convoy sliced to the highways of Africa like a river of silver lightning. Every kilometer added proof. This was no illusion. No recharging. No refueling. No stopping. Crowds gathered at overpasses, rooftops, and open fields, recording on their phones as the convoy roared past. In cities like Nairobi and Lagos, giant screens broadcasted the live journey with people chanting in unison. Africa powers itself. But not everyone was celebrating. The Intercept, far above the convoy, foreign surveillance aircraft circled like vultures. Secret messages leaked between defense departments revealed the unease. If this continues, Africa will control the future of energy. Stop this before it spreads. By the second day of the journey, unmarked vehicles began tailing the convoy. Strange drones appeared overhead some broadcasting signals, others trying to jam the live stream. But the engineers had prepared. Each car was equipped with an encrypted mesh network, allowing them to broadcast the footage directly from vehicle to vehicle, making it impossible to cut the stream. The world watches in shock. In Washington, London, and Beijing, leaders watched nervously from secure briefing rooms. Economists warned of financial collapse. Military advisors floated intervention options, one advisor in the U.S. was recorded saying, If we can't buy it, we have to break it. Otherwise, the balance of power shifts forever. But on the ground in Africa, people were celebrating like never before. Farmers, students, factory workers, all followed the convoy with flags and chants, treating it as the rebirth of a continent. 
And then came the moment no one expected, the sabotage attempt at the edge of the Sahara Desert. As the convoy entered a stretch of endless sand dunes, a sudden blackout hit the live stream. For the first time in days, the world lost a feed. Panic erupted online. Millions typed frantically. What happened? Is the convoy safe? Did they shut it down? Behind the scenes, jamming technology had been deployed. Foreign forces were making their move. But the cars kept rolling, their humming engines glowing faintly in the desert night. And deep inside the lead vehicle, the chief engineer whispered, Let them try. The world will know the truth soon enough. Breaking the silence. The desert was silent. The live stream had gone dark. The world feared the worst. Then, suddenly, the screens lit up again. But this time, the convoy wasn't just moving. It was flying across the dunes powered only by the invisible energy inside its frame. The vehicles climbed steep sandbanks, cruised effortlessly where no gas-powered SUV could survive, and descended without losing speed. The sabotage had failed. The technology was unstoppable. The final proof. As the convoy reached the edge of Sahara, the chief engineer gave one final order. Activate full power. Before the watching eyes of millions, the vehicles halted, their hoods glowing faintly. Then, without fuel, without cables, each one powered an entire mobile village. Lights flickered on, water pumps ran, refrigerators hummed, and a massive outdoor screen displayed a single message. Africa no longer borrows power. Africa IS power. The global shockwave. The world was left in disbelief. Stock markets trembled. Oil prices crashed overnight and energy corporations held emergency meetings that stretched until dawn. But in Africa, streets filled with celebrations. Cities erupted in joy. For the first time in modern history, the continent had leapfrogged the world's greatest powers with technology no one else could replicate. Airports renamed terminals after the invention. Schools added new lessons about the engineers behind it. And ordinary Africans stood taller, realizing they were no longer just consumers of the future. They were the creators of it. A new dawn. In a quiet moment after the demonstrations ended, the chief engineer stood atop a factory balcony, looking over the roaring crowd. His words, carried by every network, became immortal. This is not just a car. It is a statement to humanity that the sun does not rise in the West alone. Today, it rises from Africa the camera panned upward as the convoy lights glowed in the distance, cutting through the desert night like constellations reborn on Earth. And as the credits rolled, one thing became undeniable. The self-powered revolution had begun.